Howdy YouTube, how are ya? It's Isky here. Welcome to my YouTube video. And it's gonna be another dryer video. How cool is that? This is an Electrolux dryer. I found this at the dump, oh, it would have been about a month ago. It's just been sitting up in my top carport. And what I plan on doing to it today is basically turning it into a completely new machine, a different machine. In fact, we're gonna turn it into a different model machine. Just so happens I was talking to this bad boy last night. Yep, I talked to my dryers. And um, he was saying that he's always kind of, you know, kind of identified as a Westinghouse dryer. And um, I said, listen, mate, I'm gonna do you up. Why don't I turn you into a Westinghouse dryer? And that's what he, he was so excited. So he doesn't talk when I'm talking to the YouTube camera. He just, he won't talk to you now, but he does talk to me um, when we're alone. <laughs> All right, so that's the plan for today. Let me just show you, This is, I found this dryer. I'll show you how I found him. Let's open the door, see why they threw it out. Uh, you can probably see straight away. This is the inner shroud. This is the plastic, basically the guts of the machine. And look at that, it's all brittle, it's all cracked. It's stuffed. But uh, the funny part is there's no bowl. So they've taken the bowl out. I don't know why they've taken the bowl. In fact, this is the, these are the fins for inside the bowl. So um, yeah, uh, I don't know if there's any, it'd be nice if there was a, um, be nice if there was a, a belt in there. I don't, in fact, let's grab my expensive YouTube lighting system. Turn that sucker on. Oh yeah, I can see right down in that corner. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a little, I can just see part of the belt. I'm not sure if it works. Uh, there's a motor there. Although we won't be using that motor. I'll hold on to the motor. It's probably got a really nice fan on the back, um, on the front of that motor, which we'll hold on to. But uh, what I'll end up doing is I'll replace this entire inner guts. We'll put a new, well, it's not gonna be new, but it's gonna be from another machine, a really nice quality one. So we'll replace the whole guts of that machine. We'll put a new bowl in, um, and uh, we'll put, basically to turn a dryer from an Electrolux into a Westinghouse, all you're doing is replacing this part. <laughs> That's it. Uh, there can be slight differences. Um, for example, I think the Westinghouses are slightly older than the Electroluxes, and when they came out, they actually had a different plug. So you can, not all the computers are interchangeable. Most of them are, but uh, the earlier ones, depending on what I've got in stock, it may not be interchangeable. So we might have to kind of do a little bit of magic with wiring harnesses or just, you know, uh, changing computers. I mean, the computer in here, might actually fit some of the, um, you know, the interfaces that I have Westinghouse wise. So uh, we'll work that out when we get to it, but that's the plan for today. I'm gonna go and get some parts, we'll set it up. Um, we'll put it out here. Then I'm just gonna pull this apart first and see what we have. And then we'll probably do a quick speed lapse, time lapse type of thing and uh, knock this one over. Get ourselves a nice Westinghouse. I love Westinghouses. I reckon they're really cool. They're my favorites. Uh, they got this really cool red display. Um, yeah, looks really nice. Otherwise, it's exactly the same machine. The only, di the other difference is most of the Westinghouses they have the chunky transformers in them, so the computers in the Westinghouse are much likely, are more likely to last longer than a computer out of say one of these Electroluxes. Although they did bring out these Electrolux dryers with those chunky transformers. We'll see what's in this one. But um, anyway, that's the deal. Let me get set up and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I got some stuff. <laughs> All right, now, so this is our shroud. This is what we're gonna stick in it. I don't even know what this is out of. It's either an Electrolux or a, um, or a Westinghouse. My bet is it's out of an Electrolux. But uh, this one's beautiful, everything's nice. It's not even looking like it's um, about to deteriorate. It looks fantastic. In fact, it doesn't, have, it doesn't have a filter. Let's grab the filter out of this. Make sure it's looking okay. No rips in, no, it's okay. Let's put it in here. Awesome, so that's complete. What I'll do first is I'll actually pull this off and make sure that the fan on the other side is nice and tight. We don't wanna put it together and realize that the fan's knocking around. But, um, oh, look at this. This is why this one was dumped. 
or thrown out or given to me. Some uh, Most people give them to me these days. See the capacitor? See how it's all split there? So someone got rid of this thing just because of this $10 part. How crazy is that? It takes 15 minutes to replace. So they've gone out and they've probably spent them spent another, you know, 600 bucks. I'd say, well, this is obviously a, um, an automatic. So this is like a $600 machine. So instead of, you know, replacing this simple little capacitor for 10 bucks, 20 minutes work, they've gone out and bought themselves a $600 machine. Anyway, each to their own, each to their own. Okay, what else have we got? Um, we have some Westinghouse interfaces, computers. Now, I'm not sure which one I want to use. I like this one, it's in decent condition. Um, the writing is up the correct way, but it's a little bit yellow. Um, it's, it's kind of slightly getting a bit yellowish. Although if we have a look at this one up the top here, <laughs> it's really yellow. So I guess it's an improvement. But having said that, I've got this one, which is more white, but the Westinghouse part is upside down. So this is meant to go on a wall upside down. So anyway, let's have a look on the other side. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the chunky transformers. When computers came out with transformers like this, they just never died. So that's a good thing. Now let's have another look. Ah, oh, check this out. This is what I was talking about. So this is an older computer. Now, can you see this plug here? Now, in fact, I need something to compare it with. <laughs> Hang on a second. Okay, so I've got this one here just on the side. <laughs> wasn't actually prepared for this but that was just a that was just lucky really let's turn this over can you see this plug here can you see how we've got our plug there well we've got this other gray wire which to be honest I don't even know what it's for um, I'm not sure what that's for I've got an idea but I'm not gonna say it but um yeah basically the first computers that came out earlier on this gray wire was I think it was actually um, included in this plug and then later on they changed the computers and they made it separate so if you have a look at this one here this one is basically the older style which had this gray included in this harness so it, this gray was part of this plug it wasn't actually put in on the side like this one is so basically we can't use this computer depends on our it really depends on our our wiring harness let's have a look okay so we're using one of the newer ones you can see this is the gray wire i was telling you about so this one here has to be used with one of the newer style computers let's have a look at this one okay this is the other westinghouse so that harness has to be used with this because you can see way over there that's where the gray one plugs in separately and the other ones on a separate plug but, um there you go and this is what i was telling you this is the um the short the tiny transformer they brought out in the later computers if you were to buy one of these computers on ebay or one of these sites warehouse sites to replace your computer um, you'll get one of these computers with this tiny little transformer now these ones die all the time whereas the older ones with these big chunky transformers i've said it in previous videos they just seem to go forever Okay, enough of that. Let's um, basically open this up. That's our bowl, by the way. Look, nice looking bowl. It's a six kilogram bowl. I'm gonna pull this down, stick it on the floor, and um, go to town. Let's just take off the back. Ugh. Oh, it's nice and dirty. Let's have a look at this. Oh man, that feels really nice. This feels like a brand new bearing. Okay. Just gonna quickly take this back off. Oh. It's one in each corner. <laughs> it's like I did it. Okay, let's pull that out. Um, the heat is still attached. Let's just I bent that as well. It's nice and bent 
Okay. Please, please have a nice belt. Let's check this out. Let's suss this belt out, shall we? Nah, it's stuffed. I mean, you can use it, but I'm not gonna use this. And I'll show you why. I won't use it because of this. Can you see that burr? Now, that goes through the idler and around the bowl and through the motor enough times that will actually um, get bigger and bigger and tear and make the belt. It'll just shred the belt. Now, you can fix them. You can cut that off if you get yourself, oh, actually, rather than cut it, get yourself a nice razor blade. Start from about here and just slice it off until you get to that point. Just make it so it's nice and smooth. It'll last you for ages. I mean, I don't do it because if I'm gonna sell something, I'd rather sell them something, you know, that's hasn't, you know, that's not dodgy. That's not dodgy, to be honest with you. I'm sure a lot of people do that. But um, yeah, I'd rather sell stuff that's brand new. Um, it's not gonna be brand new. It just, um, that hasn't been altered like that. I'll use a used belt that is perfect. So I'll find something else, but unfortunately that's garbage. So what else have we got in here? <sighs> God. He's completely pulled the, the power cord off. Oh, these are really nice condition. We'll hold on to those. We'll probably use those in this build. But um, let's have a look. Basically, it's your standard dryer. So I'm going to be keeping the... Basically, I'll keep the door, the motor, the fan, that vent, and we'll chuck the rest. Um, I'm, I'm going to hold on to the, um, the wiring harness and uh, the power cord. But um, for now, oh, look, let's have a look at this idler. How's this looking? Please be good, we need something to be good. Excellent! That looks awesome. That idler is 100%. No cracks, feels and looks excellent. I'm really happy with that. I'm very happy with that. I'll just put that there. So we'll be using that, although we do have one on this one. At least we get to save it. Okie dokie. Let's um, pull this out. Get started. Check this out. So not only was this dryer stuffed because of the, the inner shroud, but um, check that out, look at the capacitor. Man, that's nuts. So he's probably thrown the dryer out because of this. He was just happy to use it while it was like that. That's nuts. Anyway, it's nothing new. Bit of a dent in the bottom corner. <sighs> you got a slight dent, that's okay.
Ah, uh, stop the press. Something very interesting has just happened. Guess what? I don't think you can. Well, you can turn an Electrolux into a Westinghouse if you really want. You can see this is a Westinghouse. Check this out. I didn't know this. I just learned something. Can you see these holes there? Can you see the tabs here? They're supposed to fit in those holes. <clears throat> they don't line up. The outer ones are too wide. Wow, I didn't know that. Everything else fits. Everything else would fit. I mean, you could do it if you wanted. You could snap those off. You could snap the outer ones off. These two in, this, in the center here, these two down there, they fit, but the outer ones don't fit. Wow, okay. All right, so we're not turning it into a Westinghouse. Sorry, buddy. You are gonna have to stay an Electrolux. So that sucks. I didn't know that. It's really interesting though. <laughs> kind of glad I did this video now. Now I know. So I am just going to put the original computer back in, to be honest with you. Wow, man, that sucks. See, this is, an, this is the other Electrolux, uh, sorry, the other Westinghouse. Same thing, same deal, it won't fit. Man, all right, let's have a look at this. This is the, uh, so this here is a five kilogram Electrolux. It needs to be six. So I have to get something. Well, where's the original computer? Ah, oh, the original computer was yellow. Oh, sorry, the interface was kind of yellow. I'm gonna see if I can find something a bit nicer. Otherwise, we'll have to use that. Well, I can't find one. I can't find a nice pristine white looking computer um, interface. I'm just gonna have to use the original. Man, that sucks. That's kind of, that's completely wrecked my video now. Am I still gonna post this? Kind of defeats the purpose of doing the video. <laughs> I've put too much effort into it. I'm posting it. Okay, it's just another make, let's make a Electrolux video. That's all it is. So <laughs> there you go. At least we all learned something. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that didn't know that. But anyway. I'm hoping this computer works. If it doesn't, we can, we can change the computer over. We just have to use the same outer casing. Okay, so I was saving this to the end, but I actually put a Westinghouse door on here as well. So I may as well change it back to an Electrolux door, I reckon. Let's put this Electrolux door on. This is a nicer one than that was on before anyway. Let's replace this. Can you see the difference between the Electrolux? That's an Electrolux. And this is a Westinghouse. It's got this bit here. They both work. They just look a little bit different. It is the original door. I remember because check this out. I can't work this out. Look at this. See the door button? It's in the wrong way. It's around the wrong way. It should be around that way. And I don't know how they've done that or why that's happened. But it won't actually go in now. I don't, oh, maybe it will. Nah. Oh shit, why did they do, how did that happen? <laughs> Another mystery. I know that I should have a YouTube channel called Dryer Mysteries. All right, let's get another dryer, uh, another door. How's this one looking? This one looks okay. That's just really weird. In fact, no, I actually don't think it's turned around the wrong way. I think there's something inside that's broken and it's just the springs pushing it on an angle. So I'll have to actually, open this up and replace that or do something but uh, that's for another video but just for now we will put on this one here which is kind of a little bit sad looking 
No, we're not putting that one on. We're gonna put a better looking door on than that, especially for this video. We are putting this one on. <laughs> I'll clean it up, I promise. I'll make it look beautiful. I mean, I guess I could probably do this in this video, um, replace this, take this door apart and fix this bit here. But honestly, guys, I don't have the time. I just don't have time. It's hard enough doing this and recording it. it really, it actually puts on two or three times I mean, this should be like a 40 minute job to do this. It's probably taken me twice that now, just because I'm recording it. But I like doing it. Let's check this out. See, that's fine. I'll clean this up. We'll do that now. I'll include that in this video. It's got a couple of scratches in it. Um, I, I, if it doesn't look very good, I'll actually replace it later. But just for the sake of this video, at least, that's okay. get a before and after shot. <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> I mean, this video really didn't go to plan, <laughs> not at all. But I'm gonna post it anyway. I'm really, I'm not overly happy with that door to be honest with you. It's, it's, I mean, it's a used machine. It's got a scratch on it, so who cares, right? I care because I'm a perfectionist. I love making stuff look brand new. And I'm not really happy with this kind of yellowing type of color in the in the um, computer there but that's all right um, listen I'll probably change the door I reckon after this video before I sell this <clears throat> but um, as for the computer it's staying like that I don't think I'll change that but let's see if it turns on let's see if this works let me just pull it over to some power that's a good sign <laughs> so she's not a Westinghouse, which was the whole idea of this video. Damn it. Okay, let's just hit. Hang on, what are we on? So this is upside down. Let's go and get something and replace that. Uh, I'll do it later. No, I'll do it in this video. I'll do it right at the end, but for now, let's just test this out. Um, let's say that's on 30 minutes. Let's just put it on normal. It's on delicate. Let's put that on normal. Let's put that on buzzer let's hit start let's see if this works awesome excellent it's working be back in a second with the right way up um, interface
Well, there you go, all done. Um, this video really didn't go to plan. This is supposed to be a Westinghouse dryer, not an Electrolux dryer. But um, anyway, I'm gonna publish it. We learned something, we did learn something. We learned that the Westinghouse, this part of the Westinghouse dryer, will not fit on an Electrolux dryer. You know, those tabs don't line up, but that's okay. If you really wanted to do it, you just, like I said before, you can just cut those tabs off um, on either side. It's still got two center tabs, but having said that, you don't even need those because it's, it's screwed in on either side of the thing. So anyway, uh, I mean, I could have done that, but why would I when I've got good Electrolux, you know, housings just here ready to put on. So I'm just gonna publish this because we learned something. So anyway, uh, this, this dryer is like a new dryer, I guess. It's got, a, it's got an entire new guts to it. It's got a new bowl. It's got a new inner shroud. It has a new belt. Um, yeah, and it's working great. The, I, I checked it before, the, the heater is working perfectly. Um, so now I'm just going to get some washing, stick it in there and just test it out three times, do three loads and then I'll sell it. So anyway, that's it guys. I want to say thanks for watching. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Alright, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. It's three weeks later, believe it or not. And I literally just came out here because um, I want to fix these five dryers that are in here. And um, yeah, I, it's going to rain next week. Massive rain. And I'm hoping to sell 40 or 50 dryers. just want to get a lot of this stuff out of here. But this is the dryer that is starring in this video. I literally just parked it there and I didn't touch it. I haven't touched it for all these weeks. And um, it's not because it's not working great, it works perfectly. I tested it and it's working fantastic. But I do remember when I was editing the video, I kind of edited it like a couple of weeks ago and I just kind of made a note that with the shroud, the inner shroud, that the bowl is actually plugged into this part here, this lip. And um, I noticed in the video that there was this big heap of fluff in one section. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I had a lot of trouble getting this this belt on and you know it was kept slipping off it was the hardest belt fit I think I've ever done and I'm wondering if that is the reason and then I saw another part of the video where the the back bowl if you have a look at that um edge that lip down there it was wobbling like when it was turning you could actually see it looked like it was slightly warped or something like that and I'm thinking that might have something to do with it so what I'm going to do now is actually open this up um, and just pull that fluff out of there and see if the bowl sits any better and just see if it's easier this time around to get that um, belt to, to stay on. I'll retest it and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if I'll put this in the video. I might do it, it's kind of interesting. And, uh, but yeah, we'll see how long the video is. But uh, let's get into it. I just realized that I, um, I thought I was recording me taking the back off this. <coughs> but nope, <laughs> just picked the camera up and it wasn't recording. Anyway, I've got the bowl out. I've got the bowl out, it's sitting over there. Let's have a look in here. I mean, let's just grab this screwdriver. I mean, look at that, that's pretty epic. I mean, that's a lot of stuff in there. Let me just, oh shit, I'm messing up my beautiful clean dryer. Oh, hang on a second. My arm um, gimbal's spacking out. All right, take two. Um, listen, let's see if I can just sit you here. It's not going to work either. All right, let's go again. I mean, there's a lot of it. Like, look at that. I don't know if you saw that. There is a lot. Wow, so I reckon that might have some kind of effect on making the bowl turn weirdly and making the belt slip off. Hmm. I need to blow it out again. I don't feel like going outside. Oh, listen, I'll blow it out again. 
I have to probably blow these other dryers that I'm about to fix. So I'm going to take it outside and blow it out and then I'll put it back together and I'll tell you what, it's, what happened. All right, I don't think I'm going to show you that. Still got a slight wobble in the bowl. It's not bad though. I mean, it's better. But um, that was a lot easier to put the belt on. It, oh, I did it just first time. It didn't take long at all. So that actually made a big difference. Just pulling this fluff out of that, um, you know, um, little lip where the bowl sits in. Yeah, glad I saw that. Anyway, I'm, I don't know if I'll put this in the video. But um, anyway, guys, once again, I'd like to say thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, um, and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> now I have to fix these dryers. Catch us later.